Good evening, everybody. <laughs> Good evening. I think it's one minute to half past. So, uh, just thought I'd pop in and say hello. Oh, hello, Andreen. Hello, Andreen. Thank you. Your first one in tonight. Super. Christine. Hi, Christine. Hi, everybody. So, let's have a look at the time. I don't know whether I've ever told you, but Mark has every, all our clocks in the house and at work are all fast. So if I'm really, really early coming in, you know, that's why, because I just forget after all these years. Hi, Philippa. Hi, Sue. Hi, Samantha. Hi, Julie. <laughs> Julie knows what I'm laughing at. I'll explain in a second. Hi, Christine. Hi, Tricia. Hi, Leslie. Good evening, Brian. Hi, tr hi Tracy. Hi, oh, thank you, Andreen. Hi, Linda. Oh, it's lovely to see everybody. Gosh, really lovely. Hi, Yvonne. Right, so I think we're on half past. Is that right, Mr. Chairman? Uh, you are now. Oh, we're on quarter to eight compared on your watch, <laughs> honestly. Right, okay, so... Good evening, everybody, and um, welcome to uh, another one of the uh, Super um, Julie Hickey Lives. And um, and this evening we're going to continue with uh, what my other lovely team members have been doing using the um, fabulous designer series from Hazel Eaton with the Christmas elements. We have loved using these. And... Um, tonight I'm going to be using the snow globe. You'll see the stamps that I'm going to be using in a second. I will show. Well, actually, I'm using all three because <laughs> uh, that's just what you do, isn't it? When you've got glorious stamps in front of you, even if you only use one or two of one set, it's just they're there to be to be used. Um, I do know lots and lots of you have actually got these stamps, so hopefully I'll be able to inspire you. Have a little go at doing a shaker card tonight. Right, so. Um, if we are ready, Mr. Chan, I will just, I'm just going to warn you. Okay, so Julie, I know Julie, you are laughing your little socks off because this afternoon, Julie attempted um, to show Mark and myself how to actually flip the camera without sending everybody on a roller coaster. I'm because still on a coaster. Uh, you're still <laughs> so um, so if you still do go on a roller coaster and it's not correct, it's not for once of trying. I can tell you that for nothing. <laughs> oh, my mum's here. Hi, mum. Uh, Angie to everybody else. If you're wondering, she doesn't pop up as mum. So oh. say if if it's a, it's Angie. So just say hello to her. It's mum. Mm. <laughs> right. Okie dokie. Right then. So if you just we're just gonna. We're just going to. Uh, try this new technique. We're just going to try the new technique. <laughs> okay. There we go. So you should be there, I think. You should be seeing the project. I think it's all a little bit too much of the ceiling. It wasn't quite intended like that, but. I think communication between the two of us slipped slightly. But, you know, Julie, we hey. really will perfect it. And that was actually rather smooth yeah, more, compared. That, that was smoother than the test we did earlier. So, do you know what? Even if you don't get any inspiration from this evening, you will get some amusing technical feedback from us. Okay, so um, hopefully... Um, you can all see this and it's all the right way and you can actually read Merry Christmas because this was the whole point of the exercise which actually get it so that you could actually see things the right way around so um, anyway so there we go that's got that sorted I think right so there we go this, this evening then we are actually going to make this card and I was so so pleased um, that um, Philippa and Julie decided um, to ask me to do this one because 
well I enjoyed doing all of all of the ones that I did and I know we all did we've all had such a lovely time with these stamps but I did particularly like this one because I think it makes a really nice um, project to get into and not only that I've made I've done it in blue and I've teamed it up with a little bit of navy uh, around the outside obviously you can do whatever colour you wish I just feel I always feel that when you're doing snowflakes I think the blue tends to go rather nicely but you know we're all so so different and obviously then it we go into the realms of which blue do you use because of course we've all got all different colours you know that you can use all the way around the edge now I did on my original one I actually used salty ocean excuse the top of that I oh, goodness knows what that is um, so salty ocean that's the one that I used initially but I thought right well I'll ring the changes and do it a little different blue and I've used mermaid lagoon well, okay Nicole's here from the Netherlands who sorry Nicole oh hi Nicole from the Netherlands oh lovely very nice um, now so oh slight train of thought yes mermaid lagoon so that's the blue that I've used there um, right, so I'm just going to, oh, oh, I'll show you the rest of the cards. So, like I said before, it is a shaker card. Can we, I think we can see that, can't mm, we? Yeah. I know, I'm a bit, I'm a bit um, childish when it comes to shaker cards. My shaker cards really have to be really good and tough because I like to shake them a lot before you, before they even go out to anybody. Um, so, I've done another slight change from the original one because the original one I just put the snow inside but then when I was looking for something else the other day and you know how you do you come across things and you think oh I'd forgotten I'd got those I found these now excuse them being in this lovely uh, chutney jar <laughs> but it's they were superb to put to um, this jar was just the right size for these they're, they're basically um, stars like confetti table table confetti type stars um you'll find them in all you know like um sort of uh very affordable shops that sell very affordable not that we buy those sort of cards if you know what i mean go in just to buy the table confetti so it does it, they do look lovely because they're actually iridescent so it does bring in a tiny weeny bit of of a, of a pink as well depending on actually where you actually put the card so I think that's made it really quite special so um, we'll go through all the processes step by step of how I made it the actual card blank is seven by seven okay so it's um, quite a nice um, quite a nice size to actually send anybody I've also put um, as we said before I put a navy well it's like a more maybe a more of a royal blue stroke navy just as a matte layer on the bottom and then on the next layer I've actually got some actually pre-embossed um, white A4 card that, that we've had quite some time and I thought you know I really need to start using this and um, this one is actually um, stripes which looks quite um, quite smart I think uh, you can see here I've used a little bit of cord and I'll, I'll just show you those little bits um, as well. The inside piece, let me just get my ruler so that we can see the sizing of this. So you're looking at 14 centim. no, yes, 14 centimetres. I'm an inch girl, you see me. I've got a centimetre ruler. So 14 centimetres square. All right. So that's actually the top piece. The other bit I will explain as we go along. Okay, so that's all you need to know. Um, I've just used a super smooth. Um, you can use, you know, obviously what you're happy to use. As long as it stamps well, it blends well, happy, all good. Right, so what else I've done? I've actually done a little bit of the inside. So I've just put a just a little bit of the ink just in that corner bit there with a little bit of a hill business going on <laughs> very simple it took me two seconds really just to do that little, one stamp and just a couple of stars and then of course I've used that lovely um, sentiment that is included in I will have a little look number two 
stamp set number two so that's the inside so of course then that's lovely and then I don't know about you but I like to decorate my envelopes as well when I'm making a really special card I like to just put something on the envelope it doesn't make any difference to the posting in fact I think if you got this letter on your mat I think it would make you smile straight away before you even open it so um, I think that's just a little extra that will cost you nothing to do and of course it doesn't affect the posting either so if I was making a box if I was hand giving this card and made a box I would decorate the box front the same and maybe a little bit of ribbon so just a little idea there so I'm just going to put that to one side um, and the card to one side there I'm going to just bring in the stamps I know you've seen <laughs> I know you've seen them lots but you know we just need to be reminded of how wonderful they are so the first set of course is the is the globe oh, it's like a skew whiff on there but I'm going to be using that in a second and of course the globe with the snowflakes we're going to be using these three snowflakes I like the way that it's been designed so thank you Hazel for that that um, with the middle out because then it gives us the opportunity of doing other things um, with it so um, and then of course there's that lovely large snowflake that you'll see in the middle there and then of course you've got your two Christmases there which do correlate with the actual um, dragonfly and the butterfly die if you have those so um, I know I'm repeating what the other girls have said over the last few nights but it's all important in case somebody hasn't seen them up to yet so this is stamp two this is the stamp set with the actual sentiment I was talking about these are the trees we're using inside the globe and also the small deer and you can see there I've actually got a mask of the moon now that I've used on quite a few um, different um, designs as well so have a look on the Pinterest board as well for all the uh, inspiration Julie Hickey Pinterest board um, it'll have lots of uh, inspiration from all the teams so that's that set and then this uh, the third set the last set but by no means the least because I can honestly say if I only had I love all the stamps but if I only had one stamp on the entire stamp set it would be this one I've used them all and they're all fabulous but I love this one so we're using that one in the actual um, in the actual globe and we're also using one of the sentiments because the sentiment all these three sentiments go into the bottom of the globe which you'll see when I stamp it but also into Philippa's circle as well so um, so if you remember Philippa's um, the designer collection from Philippa then this will also go in Philippa's circle as well so if you've got those mix and match like we keep telling you anyway so we're going to just pop those to one side have a little look any questions at all as we're going along um, please do uh, please don't hesitate to ask um, I won't answer the questions as I'm going along, but I do know that our lovely Julie and our lovely Philippa are um, have joined us. And I think Tracy, I ha yes, Tracy, I've said hello to Tracy. Sorry, Tracy. I've seen Tracy as well. Um, I haven't um, yet seen anybody, um, anybody else. Do forgive me if I haven't named any of the other design team. Um, but um, but yeah have a you know just ask the questions as you're going along and i'm sure if the if the team can't answer the questions immediately we will definitely get back to you when we've finished the live at the end okay so i am using my stamp press just to get my um my globe in position um i do use blocks a lot you'll see as we're going along um on this um particular project um but when I want to put it, when I, obviously it's got a lot of detail on. This has been so lovely, design, designed so lovely. It's got so much detail around the edge. And we've all used that extra detail without even using the globe. So do look at your stamps, break them down, have a look to see what else you can do with them. Okay, so I place my uh, globe in roughly in the middle without getting a ruler, just by eye. I just want to pick that up onto my stamp press okay um, I'm using a Versafine Claire um, because I'm basically using 
all black ink apart from obviously the blue that we're going to be blending with and uh, I have actually used um, the Versifying Claire uh, Blue Bell just to pop the sentiment in uh, because I just thought it would break up the, um, the Mermaid Lagoon blue as well so I'll just pop this over here while I just ink this up so <laughs> can you see here I've got new July 23rd I've got quite a few versifying clays because obviously we run workshops and um, we take everything with us for the students to use and um, but this is quite a new one and I always I always prepare the the, the ladies um, saying that this is a new one because obviously it's uh, quite juicy um, anyway so that's what we do pop that over and of course lightly press as you would do I've also got one of these look it's a bit goofy now actually because I, I was doing something else with it the other day um, but this is really handy because at times my hands are a little bit sore from time to time and this really helps no end so just nicely over the top I think they're a great great um, addition actually and you can see absolutely stunning beautiful beautiful stamp really lovely now I do want to um, emboss that um, just with clear embossing so I've got the um, the uh, super fine wow just going to pop that over the top like so just take off your excess as usual and we'll pop that back in you can see I am soon needing a new pot look at that I have big pots I have big pots of the basic ones because I just use them all the time I love the well we all do don't we right so I'm just going to heat that up so just give me a, a second to do that hope everybody's okay out there and enjoying this very very late unexpected summer um, yeah we've had to Actually, Mark, have you got my knife over there, Doc? Please. Oh, no, I'll get it back to you. Oh, yeah. The little Hazel's popped in as well. Oh, Hazel. Oh, hi, Hazel. I hope I'm doing justice to your stamps. I'm loving, absolutely loving them. Really do. So, there we go. We've got the globe there. And that's all, um, all done, all nicely embossed. So we're going to pop the globe back. I'm just going to pop that back on the sheet there. I'm going to try and keep my fingers clean. Oh, I don't know. Extra snowflakes will be on there if I don't. Right, so I'm actually going to go ahead now and um, use a block. And what I do is I turn my stamp platform over and put my... Oh, I've just collected an extra magnet there. There we go. Just put my um, magnets down still. And it is still magnetic. I don't know whether you know that, but I'm sure you all do. So I've got I've got my block and I'm going to take uh, from the still from the stamp one, I'm actually going to take the uh, three smaller stamps. Now you can do these individually if you wish no problem at all obviously you could use the slightly larger one in well it's a much larger one in the um in the set as well you do just as you wish you make the project your own so what we're going to do is we're just going to stamp around well somebody's asking about the tool christine the where you got that tool from the tool well do you know what christine i actually got mine um a lovely friend of mine Anne. Um, she ordered a couple off um, off Amazon, and they're actually <laughs> they're actually ice hockey. Um, you know when you go to oh, the seaside, they? air hockey, not ice hockey. Oh, yeah, yeah. I've never done ice hockey. Time, okay. <laughs> I can't get feet on the ground when I'm actually on the ice, let alone on hockey. And so yeah, it's actually an ice um, uh, uh, air, hockey air hockey table puck. Thing. Yeah. So, um, but I do believe I have seen. Um, Crafts 2 have brought out yeah, one. I think they have. Yeah, I, Mark's saying he thinks they have. I think somebody will be able to verify that. Possibly um, 
Hazel might be able to tell me about that. Um, so what I'm doing here, yeah, so the, the cheapest chips, honestly, they're not very expensive. And I really do, well, I use it, I use it no end. I do have a bit of a, um, a bit of a... Samantha uses a board rubber. A board rubber. That's a... C well done, Samantha. Now then, I like that idea. Your whiteboard rubber. That's a good idea because basically it's the same thing, isn't it? It's just a soft, a soft surface underneath the felt, and um, you're then really you're just rubbing it over the the actual thing, just giving it that bit bit of pressure and relieving your hands a little bit if you do have a a few dexterity problems. Well, it makes it easier to do while you sat down as well. Oh, absolutely. Now. I know obviously while we're doing a live, I need to keep sitting, I need to sit down because we need to keep in one position. Because it's challenging enough for the unchallenged for technical reasons. Um, anyway, and I'm talking about ourselves, not for you guys out there. But for moving the camera, messing about, I do normally stand up, to, I, in fact I always stand up to, um, to actually stamp because I prefer it. Um, and I think it gives perfect pressure. It is actually the best way. And the the way that I always teach when it, when anybody is um, oh I made a mess there. Just bear with me. When anybody's starting stamping in any class or workshops or whatever, I always say to them, if you are able, please do stand up because it gives you the perfect pressure point of of you know the perfect amount of pressure for stamping. Um, I know I'm an old woman uh, when it comes to stamping in. I'm a bit, bit of a, a fiery axe and, uh, and they, they'll, anybody that comes to my glasses will tell you. I do insist on them putting the block on the table and the ink pad to the, to the actual stamp. Nice light tapping and then just press it onto your project. I don't want to see any clapping like this. Oh no. I don't often say anything to anybody, you know, but I must admit, I do pick people up on that because I think if it's worth doing, if it's worth doing, you do it well. Anyway, they do whatever they like when they get home. <laughs> right, so you can see all I'm doing is I've just got the three stamps together and all I'm doing is I'm just taking it um, all the way around the page. You can put as many or as little as you wish. Now, I'm going to take this one off. Just going to put that on my block. And I want to just have this little teeny weeny one. And I'm going to just do a tiny bit of filling in with the little one. I just think it doesn't matter how big a stump is. You can get such wonderful effects from it. I think a little one there and then I'm going to call that a day with that. Right, so we've got our lovely background going on. I'm just going to wipe my hands so I don't mess that up. Okay, so we've got our globe. We've done the embossing with the fine embossing powder. And then we've got our lovely snowflake background. Um, like I say, if you don't want to put that many on, it's entirely up to you. You could just maybe put a few in that corner, a few in this corner, so you've got opposites or the opposites here, or just dot the little one around a little bit. Um, the other stamp, of course, out of Julie's last launch, um, I've got that here actually because I was using it earlier on a project. I don't think you can see it. Um, that one also goes fantastically well with these snowflakes. So if you've got, if you were lucky enough to get that one. Then that's good. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to take this off here. I'm just going to put that to one side for a second. And you can see now what we've got is we've got all our stamping of the front piece apart from the sentiment. Now normally I put my sentiment on not last but pretty much nearer to when I've blended and when I've done this when I've done that. But the amount of times that I've forgotten to put the sentiment on when I've done a shaker card and then once you've got a shake you've got all the um, all your foam tape underneath your shaker card it's impossible to actually stamp a sentiment on because it's not straight it's not nice and even 
so you, what you do want then is to um, just remember to do it while it's nice and flat and I bet you're all thinking what a great big block for that little stump you're right it is but can I find my little tiny ones no nope. so I've got them somewhere ready for a project I know I have right so you can see this this ba the base of the snow globe it like we said at the beginning it fits absolutely perfectly all these the three sentiments fit beautifully in the middle there that's a, a smashing isn't it I did another one for the collection um, uh, that that um, that went to Julie, and I actually um, paper pieced um, this section there, and it was a blue check, um, and I, then I matched it up with the the mat and the layer on the bottom, um, so that was quite nice to do. So paper piecing again really lends itself to that. So that um, was the Versifying Claire Bluebell okay so lovely um lovely blue uh for you to do um when you want something a little bit more than your um obviously your distress inks okay so what we're going to do now we're going to do our blending around the outside okay we'll just take that so we can get it onto the glass mat and like we said before we're going to we're going to stick with the mermaid lagoon um and if you have a little look on the uh on the Pinterest board, slightly different variation with the um, the salty ocean. Okay, but you use whatever you want. There we go. So I'm just it's not too juicy, but it's just I think yeah, it's nice and. So whilst I'm doing my blending, if anybody wants to ask any questions, or um, hopefully you've been able to catch the lives um, since the launch. I think they're, they're a super idea. Uh, just get a bit of card, here we go. So uh, I think they're absolutely fantastic idea. I've enjoyed them as, as a crafter, not just as part of the team, um, trying to get in as much as what I could. I did actually miss uh, coming in uh, live on Philippa's, but I did get a chance to watch it yesterday um, I was actually, I, I made time whilst I was um, eating my lunch Philippa, so um, I really, really did enjoy it. The Z-Fold card was super, and you know, I haven't done one in absolutely ages, so it has inspired me to actually have a, have a bash at one and uh, have a play. So I know personally I am really enjoying seeing what the team's been doing. Um, I thought um, Joe's the other night uh, with the two cards, she was on fire, bless her. Um, I thought uh, the two, those two cards were fantastic as well, but the colours were just superb. Um, and the masked tree, making it into a really modern feel, I loved that one. Um, of course, Hazel's the other night, oh, the other day. There's just been so many, hasn't there? Traces. Traces, well, wow. there were so many things on Traces cards, so many things to look at. Absolutely beautiful. Right, so obviously we all, well, most of us know what I'm doing with regards to the, the actual blending itself. So I'm just taking, it's not, it's, it's quite, um, I won't say an old, old ink pad, but it's not one of my newer ones, so I can actually go directly onto um, onto the card. But I'm just I'm just making sure that I just don't mess it up, and um, just tapping it off just slightly. It's better to put less on and add on than it is. Well, you don't want too much because you're getting a bit of a pickle, don't you? So a little bit, a little bit more, and then we're done. So now this could be slightly altered um, just by going just around the edges if you wanted to of the actual card. You don't have to put so much blue. I do like having that little bit of a halo around the, um, around the actual globe because it makes it stand out a treat. So that's always nice to do. So that is our blending. Didn't take long, did it? 
soon whisk around that one right okay so just pop that to one side for the time being we are going to we are going to need that in a in a few minutes so i'll just clean that down just quickly so good housekeeping julie will tell you she saw my desk earlier and it really didn't look like as clean as this earlier anyway right so we now need to take the middle out of our globe now knife skills it's not everybody's cup of tea and it's not every it's not everybody that likes to even uh, use a knife or own a knife little tip though that i learned right from the very beginning when i started crafting um the worst thing you can do is have a knife blade that is like semi blunt not as sharp as it should be um, when you're doing something like this because that is when you are going to incur an accident all right and the best way of doing this is and I'm just being careful here with um, my hands because I don't know about with you at home but it is really warm in here tonight really warm and I'll be honest with you my hands are a little bit sweaty and I don't want to get it on, I don't want to get any marks on my card. So what I'm doing is, you can see, you, you always, always cut towards you. All right. Do it in little tiny bits rather than one big huge line because you've got a lot more control. And move your card around rather than trying to move your body. Okay. It's no good trying to try and be a contortionist when it comes to using a knife all right because it really it's not going to give you the right pressure all the way around you can see there it's not a massive area to cut out and it's nice just very very straightforward and that's the bit that we're taking out we actually don't need that and mark's going to go wow she didn't keep it what mm. is the matter with her mm. right so um the next thing that we want to do is i want to add um a little bit of um depth into this embossing sorry the colouring so you'll see on the original one here I've actually um, done a little bit of um, well it's not bleaching out as such it's a little bit of spray water when you put it onto the obviously onto your oxides we all know that if we pop it on just leave it just for a couple of seconds then get a little bit of kitchen roll I'm going to be I'm going to be really lazy and I'm going to go like that <laughs> there we go um, and you can see there we've got some really nice texture going on just all the way around if you've got any misdemeanors with your blending this is a really really good way to actually hide them <laughs> so yeah the other thing I'm going to do is to add a little bit of um, glisten and I've got this, um, uh, Brian will be really really familiar with this, so that's Crafty Luster Sprays, it's the Frost and the Frost is a really, um, new, is a really nice neutral colour and um, I'm just, four little sprays like that, that's all it needs, just leave it just to soak in a little bit, I'm just going to very carefully just lift that up. I think I've got a little foot missing in one of my on on my um, craft mat on my glass mat. That's why it's tilting a little bit. So I do apologise um, for the for it um, tilting. I'm just going to quickly just dry this. Um, it it would to be quite honest tonight it would dry as quick as anything, but I want to just make sure that it's going to be dry when you dry it it glistens even more it really is a wonderful product actually um, they do different colours lusters and I, I do like adding a little bit here and there not too much I'm not a big you know sort of a really literally fancy sort of a, a crafter really like throwing all the glitz and the glamour at it but I do like a little bit of um, of the uh, of the luster. Now black. 
a black um, sponge I've got plenty of ink on there I don't need to put any more on what I'm going to do is can you see just around the edges where I've cut you can see the the white and all I want to do is just and this is only because I am fussy all right it's just because I'm fussy I like to just go in it's like when I'm fussy cutting I like to just finish off the edges with a little bit of ink just so that we don't see the white the white part all right so just going in from the inside out so that you're not getting it on your other design okay that personally I think that makes all the difference to the finish right so now what we need to do is we've got that front piece we now need to get our shaker inside bit as such but what we do need to do, obviously, is we need to put the acetate on. Uh, we'll put the acetate on first while we remember. Now, the acetate has to be flat. That's a little bit too much, so we just nip that off there. There we go. It needs to be flat to the actual card. All right, the actual shake bit is going to be above this bit it's not going to be in front of the obviously in front of the acetate because it'll all fall out i think that's really um, uh, i've just stated the really most obvious thing i think i've ever stated but you know it's it's we get carried away sometimes don't we you don't want all your bits falling out you don't <laughs> well you definitely don't want all your bits falling out no right so i'm just popping some um double-sided just around the edge I'm not going right onto the edge because what I want to do is obviously make sure that that acetate is nice and secure just take off the backing of that the times I have actually made a shaker card got it all together and then thought hmm, the acetate <laughs> and then it's not ended up to be a shaker card at all Right, so just nice and flat, straight down, press that down, and that is your window done. We're going to pop that to one side. Okay, so now we need to do our inside part. Okay, so the best way of doing that is just bring your stamp press back in. And, well, there's actually two ways of doing it. It's absolutely up to you the way that you do it you could take before you put your acetate on what you could do is you could just draw around with a pencil but if you don't quite get it right you've got that pencil mark that you then need to get rid of and I find that a bit of a nuisance sometimes if you don't quite get it right so what I do is I'm gonna go this way yeah what I do is I just very basically I don't need the whole the whole stamp and I'm just going to really roughly stamp this like a right amateur stamp in this this way and I'm just very quickly just nip around the edge and that is going to give me my circle where I need to be working in so this is going to be my aperture so if I now just bring this in just for you just to explain that is now going to go perfectly over the top of that I'm going to obviously nip that bit off that's not going to annoy me over the edge obviously but that is now my surface that I need to stamp into and it's absolutely perfect because it's the replica of the stamp so that's just um, a little something that I do when I've got a stamp and I'm making a shaker. Okay, so I just take that out of there because I'm now going to use the upside down a little bit. Right, so now we know that we're not going to see anything else but that middle circle. So we don't have to mask off and we don't have to mess about or anything like that. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add... Um, we're going to bring in our Mermaid Lagoon again because then that's going to marry up really nicely. And what we need to do is we need to create some hills. So the good old bit of paper torn so that we can make some hills. 
all right so let's get my blue brush in again so what we're going to do is we're going to start off in the top part there we go just nice and light i'm hardly putting any pressure on at all okay just be very very mindful that you really don't want this to be too dark because you will see when I take this off, I know you've seen several of us doing this because the, the stamps just lend themselves. Look at it. And then you've got that fabulous hill. The stamps just lend themselves so well to anything like this. Just move it along. Every single time you do it, it's going to be different. You're going to have a different formation of hills. And I don't think you'll ever, well, I think you'll struggle ever, ever to get the same twice. But then again, why would you want to, really? So just uh, moving it along. I think we'll go this way this time. You see, like I said before, it doesn't matter if I go over the edge. You're not going to see that. It's going to be all tucked on. You're going to know it's there, but nobody else is. So just, uh, there we go. Of course, doing this to the sky is lovely. Nice clouds. Go oh, into the cloud in the sky today. Not in Lincolnshire, I don't know about you. But it's well, been... It's a bit misty this morning. It was a bit misty. Still. Yeah, still I know you was out a lot earlier than me because you had a job this morning in Nottingham, didn't you? But, but you know, it's, um, it's a funny old lot. I was very confused. I've been doing, it, I came in and it was roasting. I then did some autumn projects. Then I did some Christmas and then I went back to autumn and I was like, I'm totally, totally confused now. So we've got our, we've got a base. It doesn't have to be fussy, uh, exact. It doesn't have to be over the top. I put a little bit more than what I did the last time. It doesn't really matter. I personally don't think so. It's up to you. It, you know what you like you know what you like now this is my stamp my i think the christmas go-to stamp this year is this one i have loved it absolutely loved it so just stamping this up now what we're going to do is now we're going to bring in these lovely branches okay now again i'm going right over the top you are not going to see these now cross over if you can cross them over that's it have a look take less and then a little bit more the next time or secondary stamp if you wish that's all that's lovely secondary stamp so if we do that and then we go in there we go look a little bit of secondary stamp in there i better do a little bit more over the other side though because that's it's going to be uneven isn't it there we go not that that would worry me really to be honest um right so just wiping that off okay so i've now got that it looks a bit odd because you've got all this mess all around the edge but i promise you it really won't look odd when we're finished so we're now going on to set number two and we're going to be using these lovely tree oh you can't see that there can you these lovely set of trees okay so you can actually use the single tree which is this one i'll bring in the actual stamp sex it's easy so we're using this one you could use this one this one you could use but you would need to maybe use it on its own or maybe with just that one because i think it would fill the aperture but you know if you just want a full aperture of trees marvelous now i'm going in with with the stamp and i'm not actually worrying as to where i put it with regards to the with regards to the actual hills and you'll see why in a second because i'm going to get out my um stamper's friend in a second there we go so i popped my trees in and my stamper's friend is my my pen so so just a fine line of pen and what we're going to do is we're just going to just put a little few added lines as well as the ones that we've got already 
just add those in so that these don't look didn't quite get that there we go those don't look as if they're floating we don't want any floating trees we want happy trees don't we Mark? we do like happy trees happy trees does anybody know what we're talking about Bob likes happy trees too <laughs> does anybody else watch Bob Ross on the is it what channel is it it's um, goodness gracious I don't know it's one of the channels that you hardly ever watch but Bob Ross and his happy yeah. trees. Does anybody else watch him? He's on a lot more than what he was, has been doing. <laughs> happy trees. Anyway, sorry. Got a bit carried away there. I've got the deer. Sorry, I carried on and I was talking about the happy trees. I got carried away then. I've popped the deer. The smaller of the two. Just make sure that soaks in nicely. There we go. So again... We've got that foot. He looks like he's he looks like he's pouncing a little bit, but we could get away with that. But I don't want to, so I'm just going to put my pen there so that I can actually comfortably say he is actually on the ground. Also getting a few comments on Bob Ross. On oh, Bob Ross, yeah. he's he's <laughs> tell you. Mother Christine. Tracy. Marvelous. <laughs> We're not the only ones then. Oh, he works it with a four inch brush. God, I only know. Four inch brush. Unbelievable. I cannot believe how he does it. Yep. So, but he does love his happy trees. We love his happy trees as well, don't we? Do. Yeah. Right, so we've got that part now done. So I'm happy with that. Oh, no, sorry. One more thing on that one. We need to put some snow. So there's two types of snow going on in this in this globe we've got the fixed what i'm calling the fixed snow and this is the snow that we're actually going to put this is um, it's actually the stampendous um deep impression chunky white embossing enamel but i do know that um perhaps you'll let me know um one of the girls um if wow actually do a chunky one like this um i'm to be quite frank i'm not really sure I do know that Creative Expressions have actually just brought one out. Um, I did see Francoise the other day. Just I don't want the snow on the um, on my deer, which I know sounds a bit silly because he's not going to really avoid it, is he? But oh dear! For, oh, oh, oh dear! Oh, you've no idea, have you? Any more? Any more? Right, so. Because obviously, I know most of you know about this, and quite a few of us have used it, but because it hasn't got anything to stick to on the actual surface, like for instance, the um, embossing, um, em embossing ink, you do need to just hold on to the card, heat from underneath, all right? Oh, got a bit of smoke going on there, that's that, that's it. I was just going to say, don't have it too close because you'll get a bit of smoke going on. We don't want any, we don't want any firemen to, oh, I don't know. Either. Any firemen tonight? No, it's too hot. <laughs> um, right, so we just put that there. We are actually going to use that again in a second. Right, so now what we need to do is we need to get our base card ready, which will, won't take very many minutes, but I did want to do it um, whilst you were watching oh i've got 10 minutes mark said you see i'm looking at that stupid clock again my mum will tell you my mum will tell you about sure mark's that, yeah. clocks she came in the other day into the unit in all of a all of a flap looked at the clock and went oh my god i can't stay because i've got a hair appointment and i'm 10 minutes late already Completely forgot to say, no, it's all right, the clock's ten minutes fast. It's not ten, it's only five. It's, oh, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> that's my my mat. Now, what you can do if you want, and I know a lot of us do, you could obviously gut that out. That's a basil. And I must admit, it really, really hurts my heart to actually leave all that basil on there. But I'm not going to mess about with it tonight, because we are doing the live. But... I could take quite a big chunk out of there and use it for something else. 
Now, this is um, something that I love to do. It just adds that little bit of luxury to a card. And I think it's, it's very little effort, very little cost, and it doesn't take any more posting. A um, little bit of, um, it's actually like an embroidery, um, cotton, twine. twine, fancy, lovely, thin string that sparkles a lot. I don't quite know what it's actually called, but yeah. This is a punch that I'm really sorry that I'm using it, but I don't think you can get it anymore. But I'm showing you because once in a blue moon, you might see one, somebody selling one on, you know, like the D-stash groups. Personally, I wouldn't sell it for all the tea in China. I've got two because I don't, I'll be really sorry to lose it. It's called a Southwest Punch. It's called a Southwest Punch because one goes one way and one goes the other, apparently. But that doesn't make no sense to me at all. But anyway, basically what it does, it just nibbles out those little edges there. But what you can do instead, again, if you, nice sharp scissors, these are really scruffy ones, but nice sharp scissors, scissors just nick in the same, obviously equal, equal parts either side of the corner. So you can actually do this without, without, um, the punch but if you do see a punch go in grab it honestly because they are so lovely to use right so what we need to do is we need to start off in one corner and just fasten it down on the back okay I know I've got a big bit of tape there but I'm going to use it for both bits so just oh, and all all you're going to do is Oh, that's it just do it like that and then you don't waste any more cotton I'm not a miser but I do like to when I've got something really nice in my stash I do like to um, make sure I keep it for a long time because again this sort of thing sometimes you don't see it and you just I mean, Brian uses that punch quite a lot as well yeah I love it Brian um, I've had it years and and I don't I take it to workshops any I know if I know Jean was hoping to watch and Irene and if you're watching I, I know both of them have used it use my um that one in workshops because and you know especially um just let me just explain I've took the top off the tape so that I can then put that bit on like so especially for masculine cards and I know it's shiny but if you've got like a coppery colour or a deep, deep colour that you can use, it's really lovely on masculine cards. Um, just add in that little bit of zhuzh. Zhuzh. Hmm, that's a good word. Mm. Right, now then, so we're just going to put this flat onto uh, our base. Now also... The other night, um, Jo, um, when she was doing her two projects, one of the projects had um, embossing around the edge when she used the embossing pad um, and then uh, dipped it in the um, embossing pad and just embossed randomly around the edge to give it quite a nice vintage feel. This would look really nice. Um, this, you know, obviously not doing what we've just done, but as an alternative, that would look really super. Um, so yeah, just another little idea. So you can see, let me just make sure I've got the card right. Oh, how many times have I done that? Now then, so we'll just pop in that, oh, the other way around. No, it is that way around because the stripes want to go downwards. There we go. So pop in that on. And you can see there, it does, it just adds a little bit of something. Now what we need to do now is um, we need to um, put our tape and bits on. I just want to take off a little bit of that edge here because it's just slightly over. Okay. Yep, yeah. yeah, super. Right, so... 
we need to create a gap between this piece and this piece because obviously if you don't create that gap it's not going to shake all right so <laughs> i know i'm doing i'm doing the movement and i don't know why because nobody's there looking at me are they um so the one thing that i would strongly recommend if you're doing a shaky card is to use your anti-static bag on your acetate but don't do it too much you can see i've just really just very very carefully dabbed and i've got a nice fluffy um paintbrush just making sure that it's gone all over the acetate i'm taking off the excess now this doesn't stop any of the anti-static working okay it actually does work really really well um so now what we need to do is the reason why for that is you can guarantee if you're using glitter in particular for shaker cards which of course we do often I'm, I've got an alternative with using the snow tonight but if you use the glitter the glitter always always sticks okay um, so you do need to be really really careful um, with remembering uh, I always when I'm doing a, when I'm doing a shaker card the first one of the first things I do is actually get my anti-static bag out because you can guarantee I get to this point and I can't I can't actually um, I can't remember to do it and, it and I forget yeah so I'm just putting I'm gonna just take a bit off there because I've got the most humongous reel you ever did see next to me it's ridiculous Right, so what I'm doing is, I've actually got some, um, this is actually tape, and I'm going to show you the reel because it is silly. I've lost the middle of it, look. I don't know whether you can see it. I've lost the middle of it, so I'm actually going from the middle outwards, and it's just bonkers. But what this is, it's, particular, it's particularly good. It's not called shaker tape, but it is great because it does bend around... Um, think i'm not sure if it's not a pink frog product if hazel's still with us then she may be able to tell me that um so what it does is you can see look if i take this off you can see it it does wind itself round whereas if you've got just foam pads or whatever you would have to cut so many to actually create that um going around the circle it just it just doesn't it just it just creates havoc right so as well as going around the circle what we need to do is we need to just go around roughly not you don't have to go right over the edge but you do need to go and put some nice straight bits now this is where you could use your cardboard brian philippa <laughs> our cardboard king and queen i think we ought to have awards at the end of the year you know at christmas and i think we ought to be i thought i think uh, philippa and brian ought to have the award for the most ingenious thing using cardboard right so i'm putting those there i know it looks a little bit odd but bear with me on this because i promise you this all will come to light basically you've got that height in the middle for your shaker and what you also need is you need some of the foam tape or something of the same height around the edge as well because if not it's going to dip and it's going to it's not going to look very nice so I know, don't worry, I haven't forgotten the bits and bobs inside. I'm just making sure that it looks okay. All right, so now what we're going to do is, we're nearly at the end here, we're going to just put, I always put it in my lid because I'm always frightened of it going everywhere. Right, so I'm just putting some more snow. Don't, please don't put too much. If you put too much in, it looks like there's been a massive snowstorm. Right, we're also going to put in, and if you haven't have anti-static, these are, look, look how static they are. They're even sticking to my fingers. 
Right, so I'm just putting a few in, they're different sizes. Um, then what you need to do is, is pop that in like so, and then bring in, so right from the top, and again, best thing to do for this is to actually stand up, but I'm quite happy just holding it over, popping that on. Now, can you see now how nice and level that is? If I hadn't to put these extra bits and bobs of the tape around those edges, that would have dipped down a little bit. So I hope that makes sense um, because I don't worry about what it looks like underneath. You can do a piece that's exactly the right size, but I tend to use scraps up when I'm doing this because I think it's all good to use all your scraps up. I'm almost there. If you just bear with me, I know I'm just a few minutes over. Hopefully I won't get charged over time. There we go. Let's take off those, throw those in the bin. And we've got our base all covered. And all we're going to do now is just hover that over, make sure it's all in place. And again, just because it is a really, really hot, warm night, I'm just going to put that bit of paper over the top, press that all in, and there you go. We have our tanker card. <laughs> oh, I've even pleased myself. Um, <laughs> So obviously with this one, I won't I won't uh, carry on and do the middle because um, I know you all know what I've done. Stamp the sentiment. I did a little bit of um, whilst I was actually doing um, the front, I did a little bit of the colouring inside at the same time. Stamped one of the trees, a little bit of a line with my with my fine liner, a couple of the little stamps that's on stamp set one, no two one there two there and then the sentiment and then the envelope as we said and um there we go that is our our shaker card and if mark would be really kind let's see if we can let's see if we can work it yeah mm. here we go go on <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. hey <laughs> Oh, Julie, do I get full marks? <laughs> or maybe eight out of ten, possibly. <laughs> Your finger was in the way. Oh, seven and a half then. Oh, it's not a ten from Len. <laughs> right, I do. Um, thank you ever so much, as always. Oh, oh, Julie said no. I don't mean about the card. I mean about the technical stuff. <laughs> I didn't mean. <laughs> I didn't want praise about the card. Um, right, so yes, I really must get um, Mark a director's chair and a badge because he's doing such a marvellous job. Um, so thank you everybody uh, for coming in tonight and um, having a little look. Um, with regards, we'll just do the housekeeping bit as usual, just to remind you that these are still available from um, all the stockists that are at the top of the Julie Hickey Designs page. And um, do uh, do have a little look and um, and see, um, you know, if you would like uh, which ones that you would like. If you would like them, I can honestly say that that the last the last launch from Julie and these from Hazel, I could very very happily create all my Christmas cards this year using these because there is so much. Um, that you can do with them small cards bigger projects i've used as you've seen from from the team um even though they are smaller stamps by golly when the, you put them together it makes such a beautiful project um thank you for sticking with me i know i'm a few minutes over i do apologize for keeping everybody um but i hope you liked it and um, this will be on um on record all being well <laughs> um to at the end um and uh, you'll be able to have a look back. And our lovely Julie is also putting them onto our 
uh, YouTube channel, which is the Julie Hickey uh, YouTube page. So do subscribe to that as well. Um, thank you to all of the rest of the design team for their incredible inspiration. Like I said, as we were chatting, I've thoroughly enjoyed all the lives. Um, and um, yeah, just um, keep uh, tuning in. Oh, and don't forget the Daisy Challenge. There's the Daisy Challenge is, is, is still, I'm not sure when it finishes, but I do know that that's, uh, so do have a little look on the um, on the site to have a look to see what that's all about. Okay, so I'm going to say goodnight and thank you, Julie, for asking us um, to do another live. And Philippa, we, I've loved it, as you know, I do. Thank you very much. And we'll, um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.